Huawei, a giant Chinese telecommunications corporation, is a suspected front company for espionage. The intelligence services of the United Kingdom, India, Australia, Canada, and the United States have said so. Recently, it was announced that a rural area of Michigan has the dubious distinction of getting the latest so-called 4G high-speed internet service thanks to equipment from Huawei. If you look at a map of Michigan, it looks like a fat left-handed mitten. The area known in Michigan simply as the Thumb is about to get what a mid-September press release calls ultra-broadband internet, internet telephony, gaming services, and streaming multimedia, all courtesy of China's Huawei and a Michigan wireless broadband company called Speed Connect. The CEO of Huawei is Sun Yafang. A recently declassified CIA report notes Ms. Sun worked for the communications department of Chinese intelligence before joining Huawei. Ren Zhengfei, the prickly and secretive founder of Huawei, is a former officer in the Chinese Army's Telecommunications Research Division, which is charged with finding ways to spy on the communications of other countries. On August 4th, I posted a video called Governor Rick Perry, China Loves Him. In that commentary, I noted Perry presided last year over the ribbon cutting for Huawei's new U.S. headquarters in suburban Dallas. This is a company with a really strong worldwide reputation. Noting that he went to China and had dinner with Ren Zhengfei, Governor Perry had warm praise for the founder of Huawei. Meeting Ren was a, 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 a I was just sharing with uh, one of our traveling uh, companions today what a really interesting man he is. <laughs> Rather st straight spoken. Uh, if, if you didn't know any better, you'd say he grew up out in West Texas. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, he kind of tells it like it. it what, he wasn't sugarcoating it a lot. Uh, is what I'm, and, and, but he, he truly is a, uh, a, a very powerful um, uh, chief executive officer and, and, and uh, a, a, a very focused and, and, and hard-driven individual, which uh, in the world that we live in today is, is uh, uh, a, a great attribute. Huawei has been fighting for years to get its hooks, or should I say telephone and data equipment, into the United States telecommunications grid. The U.S. government has been fighting for years to keep Huawei out of our telecom grid because our counterintelligence watchdogs think Huawei is a Trojan horse for Chinese espionage. The fear is that telecommunications equipment from Huawei may contain circuitry and components which could be activated for spy operations, or more ominously, to hack and disrupt our national communications grid in the event of a war between the U.S. and China. In the latest spying skirmish between Huawei and the United States of America, the U.S. Commerce Department has barred Huawei from bidding for work to build a new national wireless network for emergency first responders. Commerce Department spokesman Ken Griffiths told the online Newsweek Daily Beast that Huawei will not be taking part in the building of America's interoperable wireless emergency network for first responders due to U.S. government national security concerns. The 2011 annual Pentagon report to Congress on the military buildup of China talks about China's interweaving of civilian corporations with the rapid buildup of the People's Liberation Army. The Defense Department report singles out three civilian companies by name. Huawei is one of them. Dan Blumenthal, a member of the Congressional Advisory U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, recently issued this warning. U.S. businesses and government entities should be very wary of entering into business with any of the companies identified by the Pentagon's report on Chinese military power as having ties to the People's Liberation Army. The report is vetted by the Secretaries of State and Defense and the National Security Advisor. It represents the consensus view of the U.S. intelligence community. Michelle Van Cleve, a former top counterintelligence advisor to the Pentagon and the Department of Homeland Security, recently told the Washington Times, big companies like Huawei are business giants, but they're also stalking horses for Chinese intelligence. She added, two years ago, Britain's domestic intelligence service, known as MI5, warned that equipment installed by Huawei in British telecoms networks could be used to disrupt critical services like power and transportation. The same could be true here if we don't watch our backs. Yet U.S. telecom companies like Michigan Speed Connect are tripping over one another, vying to do business with Huawei.
Speed Connect is not alone. While our government resists Huawei's incursion into our critical information and communications infrastructure, profit-obsessed U.S. business executives are only too happy to do business with the suspected Chinese espionage front company as long as they see a profit in the deal. While our government has been resisting Huawei at the national level, Huawei has been busily working at the state level. Business press releases show Huawei has sold networking gear in Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, Kansas, and Michigan. National cell phone providers like Mediacom, Leap Wireless, and Cricket are all bringing Huawei into our national telecom grid through local and regional deals. In 2011 America, greed trumps patriotism every time. For many U.S. business executives, there is no such thing as economic treason. Speed Connect, the company bringing Huawei to Michigan, is based in Saginaw. This is ironic because Saginaw's largest employer is now the communist government of China. The Chinese government owns the big next steer plant, once known as the General Motors Saginaw Steering Gear Unit. Michigan's Governor Rick Snyder recently returned from a trip to China to plead with the communists to come to Michigan and set up Chinese-owned companies. Snyder and most of Michigan ignore the inconvenient truth that ownership is not the same as trade. Snyder and other U.S. governors have been lining up this year to beg Red China to essentially take ownership of America's economy. The message to China is this. Even though you are democracy-hating communists, we will let you take ownership of our economy and our job creation capacity if you'll just come here and hire a few people and pay some local taxes. This sellout of America to a communist dictatorship is not a partisan issue. When Michigan Governor Snyder returned from his Asia trip, State Democratic Party Chair Mark Brewer needled him in a press release for bringing back a goose egg in terms of new Chinese ownership of Michigan's economic base and communist government control over local paychecks. If you live in Michigan, this story is probably news to you. That's because the Michigan media missed the story. Again. Michigan's supposed news watchdogs consistently miss stories about the globalization and Chinification of the economic lifeblood of Michigan and the United States. There have been numerous warnings over the past decade of national security concerns about Huawei. Yet none of Michigan's news outlets have brought the national security implications of the new Huawei networking deal in the Thumb region to the attention of the people. When the Chinese Communist government took control of the next year plant in Saginaw, None of Michigan's major papers or TV stations noted the historic nature of the takeover. A proposed new bridge linking Detroit to Windsor, Canada has been a hotly contested political issue, yet no one in the Michigan media has pointed out the project as part of the North American Super Corridors Plan, more infamously known as the NAFTA Superhighway, a three-nation scheme of intense interest and concern to countless Americans, including people in Michigan. One of the bidders on the proposed Detroit Bridge is the Fluor Corporation of Texas. Fluor caused a firestorm in California when it won the contract to build a new $7.2 billion San Francisco to Oakland Bridge and successfully maneuvered to have the massive steel work done in China. The Michigan papers and TV stations have missed the Fluor story, too. The truth is, the Michigan media consistently miss or ignore the implications of the world's largest communist dictatorship gobbling up more and more of our economy in what amounts to an economic cold war. Our national security watchdogs tell us over and over that the People's Republic of China poses a threat to our national security. That threat is largely economic. But you wouldn't know it if you had to rely on the Michigan media to keep you informed. For the people of Michigan and all of the United States, Ignorance is costly bliss, and what you don't know can hurt you, and it can hurt our increasingly fragile democracy. I'm Vince Wade.